So when diagnosing these conditions, right, if, if a dermatologist is looking at someone, when would they say it's, say, seborrheic dermatitis versus a type of eczema versus psoriasis? By clinic, by history, always, the most important thing is we always have to listen to our patient. Number one, you get the history. We get, we get a thorough history about when did it start, how does it progress, does it come and go, and how often is that, and what seemed to trigger it, things like that. Okay. So history is number one. Then the second thing is we look at the distribution. Distribution of the seborrheic dermatitis tend to always be on the scalp, although there are some people who may have subderm, we shorten it, subderm, in the face. I get that. On the chest as well. Mm -hmm. So here it's called banker's rash, Shiva. <laughs> right. Because it's linked to stress. I know. So that's how you would do in psoriasis as well. You ask this, your parents, do you, do you have any psoriasis in the family? How old were you when it got started? Mm. And what parts of the body would start the process before then it becomes more generalized and thick and patchy all over? Because there's usually the history of that. But you mm -hmm. have to when did I begin? Was I just a 10-year-old? Or did it actually start anew in, uh, when I turned into my 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, which is a peak age that psoriasis develops until some people will then come at the age of 40, 50, 60, as they I have. And in those patients, I'll always look for the history of what drugs are you taking. Hmm. Because certain drugs that you may be taking internally may be the one that's making the psoriasis flare hmm. at a low, but, at an older age. But for diagnosis, right? Because a lot of people will come, at least to us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, customer questions we get, and they'll be like, oh, I have eczema or I have psoriasis or I have seborrheic dermatitis. One of the first things we ask is, is that a diagnosis made by a doctor That's or is right. it a self-diagnosis? And so the question I have is, you know, it. A lot of this stuff can look similar, especially to the untrained eye, to a non-physician, right? So what are the things a doctor might use? So you mentioned clinical presentation, mm -hmm. history, mm -hmm. familial hereditary factors, mm -hmm. drugs that they might be taking. Right. Would you also do diagnostic tests? Yes. Definitely. Like what? Like what? Very often, we dermatologists can I know what psoriasis is just based on the first two, which is the history. How it started, etc. And number two, what treatments have been given, have been used for it, and how has it progressed through the years? Those are basic questions. And from then looking at the lesions themselves mm. visually, as well as the new stethoscope of dermatology is called a dermoscope. I can look at that skin. Which she loves it. this thing. It's non interventional. I just take a look at it, look at, put it on the skin, and there are features about it that say, ah, this is psoriasis. But do you also do biopsies or blood tests Absolutely. or patch tests? Okay. Absolutely. And the importance of the biopsy in particular is to rule out other conditions that may be um, aggravating the psoriasis. Okay. So, for instance, uh, we do a biopsy and we look, of course, at the surface. Very uh, typical. The classic features of psoriasis will be seen by us in the epidermis. But then we look into... The rest of that epidermis that has taken scaly, are there any bubbles there? Uh -huh. And in addition, we look at the lower part of the lesion, and if we see uh, lots of eosinophils, it's a kind of cell type that we will see in skin biopsies, but there's lots of it. Right. Then I will have to consider an associated psoriasis uh, inc incited by the drug that you're looking for. People who are taking, for instance, lithium. And several of the neuroleptic drugs, they can trigger psoriasis and okay. stay with it until you stop it. Right. So the other one, let okay, me finish. Go, go. The other one, so we're going deep into that. But in addition, um, psoriasis, we need to look at it because there are so many side things besides um, contact dermatitis. It can have mites in them, for instance, mm -hmm. or fungi or bacteria. Okay. We need to look at that. That we can spot in a skin biopsy and then order yeah. a culture as needed. So right. you need a doctor to yes. analyze okay. all that. So a sort of wrapping this all up, because obviously this is not med school or a dermatological <laughs> residency. There's a lot to go through, right? Um, her other daughter, my sister, is in med school. So she's, she's drowning in all this. It's a lot. But basically, 
eczema and psoriasis can are dry, right? They look dry, but they're not just dry skin. They are inflammatory skin conditions. A dermatologist is needed to make the diagnosis. This is not something that you can kind of just diagnose yourself. Because there, as you just heard, there are so many factors to consider, so many things that it could be. It could be just regular inher inherited sort of psoriasis, plaque psoriasis. It could be drug-induced, et cetera, et cetera. So you really need a dermatologist to do it. Among the uh, tools to diagnose the conditions are family history, uh, how it presents in the skin, obviously the clinical manifestation of the thing, but some people, especially like her, because she's a dermatologist and a dermatopathologist who takes biopsies and reads them under a microscope, give a more accurate diagnosis as to what we're dealing with. And she often also asks for blood tests to look at inflammatory markers. And she'll often do that with inflammatory patients over years to check and see how the inflammatory markers are doing and to see if there's another infection that might be contributing. So the basic thing to learn here that we've covered so far, eczema is a descriptive term and it means bubbles and then the crusting over. It can be several things, atopic dermatitis, numular eczema, uh, eczema from contact dermatitis, which is why photosensitivity, which is why a patch test is so important for these two things. And psoriasis manifests as plaques and scales. And seborrheic derm dermatitis is neither, but it is scaly, right? Um, Obviously. And inflamed also, but a different thing. 